What's going on, people? Mike C Town here. Another episode of Records and Ramblings. Uh, before we get to the records, let's do a little bit of rambling. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit different with the audio. Hopefully, it helps a little bit. Uh, I do have a mic, but it's not a boom mic, and I don't want to like stick it way up on my face because then it's going to be in the shot, and the shot will be all awkward. So, uh, but yeah, I have it kind of closer than it usually is. So let me know if that helps at all. All right, let's talk about some records. First record I'm going to show you. Uh, this is Biters with Cut Your Teeth. Um, Biters are a local Atlanta band. I've talked about them before on my channel. Uh, they're pretty much what happens when a bunch of punk kids hear Thin Lizzy and the New York Dolls in the same weekend. Uh, it's fucking great rock and roll, uh, with a slight punk edge to it. Uh, this is a collection of some out-of-print singles and, uh, out-of-print EP material. Uh, some of this stuff I already had on physical format, but some of it I didn't. And I lucked up and found this at a new record store in Atlanta that I happened to check out. And I was really stoked to have it because uh, this actually sells for quite a bit of money. But, uh, but yeah, it's got some great songs on it. If you don't know The Biters, go check out the, uh, the video for Hallucination Generation. I think you will like it. Um, but yeah, hang around. Baby, we'll just hang around. It's good stuff, man. Really, really good stuff. Especially if you like just straight up kind of sleazy rock and roll. Records on Black won't bother showing you that, but it does have this poster that's kind of cool, but, you know, I'll never do anything with it. The next two records are by the same band, and that is uh, Blood Incantation. This first one I'm showing, this is uh, Interdimensional Extinction. So I am really late to the Blood Incantation party. When they were really, really getting popular, I simply didn't care. Uh, I thought they were good, but I didn't think they were anything that was... Uh, justifying all the hype that they were getting. They just came off to me as Morbid Angel clones. And uh, then one day, I don't know, I guess I was just in a mood, and I, I put it on, and I was like, wow, this is actually, it's actually really good. And uh, the other thing that kind of turned me off was, I remember, I think it was Canyon that showed this a while ago, and I was, I just don't like space-themed metal. And that cover, I was just like, mm, no, nah, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not listening to that. It's just, it looks stupid. But yeah, I judged the book by its cover, and that was really stupid because it's really not space-themed metal. Uh, or if it is, you can't really tell. But yeah, this is the uh, the 2017 pressing, which I believe is the third pressing of this record. But yeah, man, this is just great, dirty, nasty death metal, which is the only kind of death metal that I actually like. Comes with this nice insert here, and mine is on red vinyl. I don't know the limitation of this, but if you haven't picked this up, hopefully you can still get it for a pretty decent price because it's, it's really good. And this is the other Blood Incantation record. This is their full-length uh, Star Spawn. Uh, this one came out in 2016. This is the 2017 pressing, which I believe is the second pressing of this record. More of the same uh, material as the original, just more fleshed out songs. Some great, great, great riffs on this thing. Uh, some great production. Here is the insert. And the vinyl for this is really cool. This is on Dark Descent. I'm pretty sure you can still get this. Again, I don't know the limitation of these records because I just, I don't know, man. I just buy records. I don't really care about the limitation most times. So yeah, if you dismissed these guys like I did in the beginning, um, definitely give them another shot. You, they might have grown on you. Or you might still think they suck. I don't know. Moving right along, next record I'm going to show you. This is Il Mestiz with The Noose Hangs From Heaven. One of the best album titles I've ever heard. But this is a Canadian punk band with some black metal leanings. Uh, so much of that like black metal punk stuff is just absolute garbage. So few of them are actually good. But this one is great. Great riffs, uh, fast, violent sounding stuff. No insert in the records on black, so I won't bother showing you that. But this compiles their two demos um funny thing is the first demo i like a lot more than the second one because the second one is so underproduced that it's a bit difficult to enjoy sometimes but you know i know a lot of you guys like the really raw black metal stuff so um this should fit right in with you guys so if you haven't heard this shit go grab it from fallen empire a fantastic label that puts out killer music and that is absolutely no exception. If you like Bone All, if you like uh, uh, Grinning Death's Head, especially if you like that Ritual Knife album that came out, which is a fucking fantastic release. If you like all that shit, you'll like Il Mestiz. 
All right, moving along. Uh, God damn it. Call fucking... Call somebody. Get somebody on the motherfucking phone and get my... Get my whole fucking channel canceled. God damn it. Get my whole shit taken down. But yeah, this is uh, Morrissey with Low in High School. So... Um, yeah, Morrissey is one of my favorite artists, but guys, yes, he's always been an asshole. Uh, I don't know why this is such big news now. I think it's fucking hipster bandwagon bullshit to hate Morrissey in 2018. I don't give a fuck. I love Morrissey, but I didn't love this record. Um, I liked it a lot when it first came out, but it, for some reason, I don't know, man, it just... It didn't stick with me. It's a weird time when Morrissey puts a record out and it's not in my best of the year list, but I simply didn't return to this all that much. I think his last album was a whole lot better. It's a nice printed inner sleeve. It's on clear vinyl, which I typically don't like clear vinyl because it doesn't sound awesome, but I don't know. I got it anyway. Don't get me wrong talking about this. Uh, it's not a bad record. It's actually a good record. It's just, I don't know, it just didn't, it didn't do it for me. Maybe in a year from now, I'll listen to it again and be like, holy shit, what the fuck was I thinking? All right, these last two records are by the same artist, an artist that I absolutely love. I love this guy's music. I think it's unbelievably creative. Um, but yeah, this is The Weeknd with Beauty Behind the Madness. All right, so it took me a while to actually pick this up, not because it's hard to find, but because it's so fucking expensive that I just kept talking myself out of it. And finally I just broke down. I was like, look, this record is incredible. Just buy it. Just buy it. Quit being a dick. But uh, but yeah, uh, his hooks, his melodies, his catchiness, it's just perfect. And for those few weirdos that don't know who The Weeknd is, y'all are fucking up. But uh, he does like dark, modern-ish R&B with a very strong pop sensibility. Um, on his last two records, his, his most recent ones, uh, he sounds like, like Michael Jackson on drugs. You know what I mean? Like, which I guess is just Michael Jackson because Michael Jackson was on drugs. Uh, what am I trying to say? He sounds more like if Michael Jackson was making music for druggies. That's what he sounds like. But yeah, this is some good shit. This is a slight departure from his other albums, which were more akin to like straight up R&B, but they were still dark and kind of airy. This one is a little bit more radio friendly, a bit poppier, um, but don't let that scare you if you're not into radio type shit, because I'm not. This record is just, it's incredible, dude. That's all I can say. It's just incredible. And this is the one that actually got me hooked. Shout out to FIFO. He actually put me on to the weekend. More clear vinyl, but, uh, but that's okay. This record actually doesn't sound bad. But yeah, the song Real Life, fucking amazing. Tell your friends about it. Yeah. I can't feel, I can't feel my face when I'm with you. Shit is tight, god damn it. Shit is motherfucking tight. In the night, tight, god damn it. Look, everything on here is fucking tight. Only thing not tight is goddamn Ed Sheeran ass coming out here with his fucking terrible ass voice fucking trying to sing. Get your ass the fuck out of here. But the rest of the shit is just fucking great. I like the, the way that they did this to where like the record comes out of the top as opposed to the sides. I wish everyone would do them that way. Oh, no, I don't. I'm lying. I'm lying through my teeth. I hate that. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Because when you put it in the sleeve, the records are kind of exposed, and I'm always afraid they're going to fall out. I'm sorry, guys. I am totally bugging. But yeah, I don't like this. So no more record companies do this, please. All of you guys, don't ever do this again. This is stupid. This is very, very stupid. All right? And no, I don't want to, like, put it sideways in the sleeve. It's like an OCD thing, okay? All right, fuck off. The last record I'm going to show you in this edition of Records and Rambling. This is another weekend record. This is Starboy. This is his most recent album. And the motherfuckers listen, and they put the goddamn opening on the right side this time. But, uh, but yeah, this one goes even more in the pop direction. It's still a fantastic album. Uh, still dark, still depraved. It's just a bit catchier, but... Um, the song Starboy is just fucking incredible. I'm a motherfucking Starboy. Starboy. False Alarm. Probably the poppiest song he's ever made. But it's fucking great. Um, Six Feet Under is an amazing song. A Lonely Night. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a really good record. It sounds even more like Michael Jackson. But yeah. If you're looking for something a little bit different, I even hear that metalheads are starting to get into the weekend, which is really, really, really weird. 
but fucking cool, man. Red Vittel. I don't know the limitation on this. I'm sorry. I didn't do my Googles before I started recording. But, uh, but yeah, deal with it. All right, so that's it for this edition of Records and Ramblings. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Get in the comments section. Let's chat about some Muzak. And yeah, let me know if the audio is any better than it normally is. All right, so yeah, as usual, thank you for living. Thank you for loving. Thank you for being you. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace, bitches.